संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम दाम काम दुधा कल्पतरु पारस चिंता मनीचार संत समानते एके नहीं में मन मा करियो विचार संत समानते एके नहीं में मन मा करियो विचार कन्शाम महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे सुप्रीम अलमाइडी आर बिलवेड Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Guruji, Pujya Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. You know, as a teenager, freedom is probably the biggest asset a teenager possesses. When you become that age of 16, you feel and you experience freedom everywhere. You start to develop and you start to gain different responsibilities. But along with responsibilities, you tend and you can make your own decisions. That's why as a teenager, Freedom is probably the biggest asset. But along with that freedom, it doesn't mean that as teenagers, we can do whatever we want. Or it doesn't mean that it's only one-sided. Let me give you a hypothetical for that. Now, <clears throat> every now and then, obviously your friends at school invite you to the movies or bowling or some kind of function they have on weekends. At one time, your best friend invites you and you're going to go. You've planned everything. It's all set in stone. You said yes to him. He's invited to you to, to the movies with a couple of their friends and you're looking forward to it. But when that time comes on Saturday, your mother and father ask you and inspect you and tell you no, you can't go. You said, why not? Because we said so. You have a couple chores left. And we don't feel that it's safe that you keep going out and coming late night. Now, hearing this, you completely explode. You say things that are absurd. You, you say things that are not even respectful and you tend to blame everything on your parents. You get into a big argument, yet you know that they're still above you and that freedom breaks in half. Now, getting into an argument with your parents also causes many troubles when you have to deal with them, when you have to ask for the car or when you have to ask for your allowance money or just in general, if you want something, it's difficult because you know that your parents are upset with you. But looking at reality, looking at perspective that is actual, were your parents right or wrong? Or were your parents looking out for your best safety when they were telling you that they don't want you going out and coming late back, late night back at home. After time, you probably figure out that they were looking at your best interest, but it's very hard to admit. In the same way, as satsangis, or as just regular people, we tend to get into some kind of arguments with our parents, and due to that, the bondage breaks. But we don't see the perspective that they're seeing. Due to that, this happens. And today's lecture is on 
the importance of your parents, the importance why serving them is such a big factor and should play a big factor throughout your whole life. Now, it's the hardest time when you have to deal with them is probably between the ages of 16 to 24. When you're a real growing teenager and you're in high school and you're going into college and you want freedom, that's what you want, that's what you're there for. And your parents restrict you. That's where you go against their will and you go against their message. Well, as a point of a satsangi, we should respect our parents no matter what. Especially in the Hindu, you can say ethnicity, this is plays more of a factor where our parents are something that are very high to us and we do respect them. But at times now, and since nowadays, this age has become more corrupted in the fashion where they don't tend to listen, it plays a very, very difficult factor. That's why today's lecture is on the importance and the service of our parents. Whoever's watching right now, or if your parents are also watching with you, or just one of your parents is watching with you, I'm sure they're probably going to get a kick out of this, and they'll probably tell you that, I told you so, look, you should serve me, or they won't say it directly, and you should say you should serve parents. But this is the right message for all, this, all those kids, because in the end, they've been through all that situations and they are always going to be right so first and foremost what are the roles of a parent a mother and a father let's break it down first and foremost in the world a father what roles does he play well he's a life coach he counsels he gives you advice he's been through those tough times where you know he knows that this isn't a good way to go, this is a bad way to go. He's like a counselor. If you go to your school counselor and you meet, and what do you have to talk about? Obviously your academics. Your counselor counsels you. You need to get your grades up. And the way to do that is you need tutoring after school, or he gives you some kind of advice. Oh, you wanna really get into this college, but your grades aren't that great. So what you'll probably need is some extracurricular activities and probably do summer school to get extra credit in. Some kind of counseling goes by. In the same fashion, your father counsels you on life, counsels you in the fashion of how to behave, where to behave, all those kinds of positions where it's very d difficult to determine. That's where your father comes in. Also, he's helpful on the social side as well as the emotional side but his main role is to pretty much give you and teach you everything on the other side you have your mother out of the parents the mother has very very or you can say probably the, the biggest role because she is pretty much you can say your support how so what roles did she play let's take a look She's your protector, and she's your educator. Protects you because you're a small child, and you grow older, not so much, but educates you in that fashion. She's a safe base, and she's someone to rely towards. If you get hurt, or if you get hurt even orally, someone hurts your feelings, you can always tell her. You can. She's someone that you can rely on. Teaches not to be afraid of our surroundings, and she teaches us low activity games such as low activities such as reading game playing that's her role this is a role of a mother and father in the world taking a look at the uh, spiritual side we can consider our father as Sriji Maharaj himself and on the other side we can consider our mother as Puja Guruji so when you enter into Mandir you should put your mother and father your, you can say, biological mother and father on the side, and you should accept Maharaj and Guruji 
as your mother and father when you come here or when you have to deal with any kind of religious aspect. Otherwise, when you're dealing with the world, you already have your biological mother and father. But Puja Guruji, he's our mother. Obviously, he's not a female. But you're probably saying, how could he be a mother? Well, I got a couple of stories for you that can really inspire you or even really show you his mother-like nature. But how did he get it? You're probably wondering. Well, I don't know if you knew, but our guru lineage or our spiritual lineage, you know, just like how everyone has a family tree, in the same way, we have a family tree in the base of our, you can say, guru or spiritual master. Our first guru is Muktanand Swami. Sadhguru Muktanand Swami had a title by Sriji Maharaj that he was Satsang Nima, meaning the mother of Satsang, the mother of religion at that time, because of his characteristics. That same characteristic has pretty much been brought down through the lineage and, and has been installed fully in Puja Guruji. How so? You're probably wondering. Well, in India, Gandhari Gurukul is pretty much a hostel-based boys' school. And there, about 400 students attend. Some live there. Most of them live there. Some travel back and forth. And it's school-based where there's many, many kids. Now, Puja Guruji has a very rigorous schedule. And he's always busy going out, traveling. And when he's there in Gandhari Gurukul, there's kids that he meets and greets and he sits with talks to him about the spiritual life and how to become good morally character wise but guruji just doesn't end his duty there you know one time there was this one you can say child in the age i think he was a fourth grader who became sick and just vomited and he had a headache he had a fever now Pucha Guruji didn't know him as much because there's 400 students and every year they filter out every year so but he saw this and Guruji had great compassion when he saw this so just like how a mother nurtured his own child just like how a bird nurtures his own nest in the same way Pucha Guruji took that child, placed him in his lap, and pretty much, you know, massaged his head, fed him, cleaned up after him, just like how a mother would clean up after his son. Guruji did this kind of service, and all the santos and many, many kids saw this, and they were amazed because with such a rigorous schedule, with such a high status in society, not only that, but as a saint, and with 400 kids, Puja Guruji saw one kid who was very, very ill. He decided to take care of him. I mean, just think about his mother-like nature. Not only that, but Puja Guruji has a very high status as of right now, and he has a very high post. And what he does is he takes care of the whole satsang, even right now, by attending temples, asking for the... All, all the temples that are associated with Guruji under his control. He goes and attends to those temples. He asks all the saints how they are. He takes care of even saints that he doesn't know as much. Meaning, he has a very, very intense yearning, intense desire to take care of the satsang. And that's why we can give him the title of Mother of Satsang as of right now in this modern age. So, just putting it short, Puja Guruji is our mother in the form of satsang. But, getting back on track, I told you the roles of a father and the roles of a mother. Now, obviously you need to know, serving, I mean, you're probably thinking, I serve them by, you know, just saying yes, no, doing a couple things here and there. But, what is true service? What can consider to be service in the eyes of Maharaj, Puja Guruji? Let's take a look. 
So I want to tell you a story. It's an historic story, and it, it's a story of Shravan. Now, there was a sage by the name of Shantuni, and he had a wife, and after some time, they had a child. His name was Shravan. Now, Shravan served his parents, Shantuni and his, and his wife, his mother, very, very devoutly. They were blind, but his service was so deep that you'll be able to see how deep it was. So one day, his parents told him that, you know, now our time is almost up in this world, and now we're about to leave. But before that, we want to do a pilgrimage around the lands of India. So Shravan made this kind of travel device where, I'll explain it to you, it was a big rod in the, and he carried it on his back and just like how there's a scale, a wing scale on both sides, there was a, a basket and it hung to the rod and his mother sat in one side and his father sat on the other side. So it was pretty much balanced. And in Gujarati it's called the kavar, but I just explained to you that it's just a special device, a carrier device that he had made. And pretty much he started his journey around India. So he went and he satisfied his parents and he came to the village of Ayodhya. Now there, he came to Ayodhya and he sat the courier down and his parents told him that they were very thirsty. So in the nearby Saryu River, Shravan went to fetch them some water. He went with his pot and he was going and then he reached the river and then while he was just collecting some water, all of a sudden, an arrow pierced his chest. It was probably like, what just happened? But Shravan went down immediately. And what had happened was there was this king who was hunting for deer. And there, while hunting for deer, he accidentally shot Shravan mistakenly thinking that he was a deer from a long distance, but he couldn't tell. And King Dasrat was his name, went to Shravan and pretty much apologized because his intention was not to pierce him with an arrow in the chest or anywhere. But he explained his situation. I was humping, hunting for deer and I accidentally shot you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And Shravan was in great pain. But he said that my parents are very, very thirsty. At that time, look at Shravan's thought process. He's not thinking, why did you shoot me? He's not thinking, he's not upset. He's not even thinking that, you know, now I'm going to die and this is the end of the world for me. No. What is he thinking? My parents, they need water. They're thirsty. So Shravan gave directions to King Dasarath that please take this water pot and go and give it to my parents and give them water. They are blind. Please give them water, assist them, and everything else will be solved. So King Dasrath went there, and first and foremost, obviously the parents could tell that it wasn't Shravan because of the touch, and they asked, who are you? King Dasrath explained that, you know, I have, to, I have something to tell you, that I have shot your son, Shravan in the chest and he has died and I'm here to apologize but he has told me to deliver this water to you because you're very thirsty the parents grieved very much and on hearing this the parents said that we don't want to curse you but now it's all in God's hands King Dasrud begged for forgiveness but however in the end what had happened was that the king soon grieved for his son, and the king died. King Dasar died and soon grieved for his son, who later was known as Ram, meaning Ram Bhagwan, who was born in Ayodhya. But this story teaches us the fashion of serving one's parents. Obviously, nowadays, we don't have to do any of those kinds of services, but just completely being obedient saying yes, no, and not arguing with any of their, you can say, statements, 
is something that's very very important so in the end i don't want to scare you but in the mahabharat in the shanti parva chapter 108 it is said that one who becomes one who is a son or daughter and does not serve their parents when they become older gets the sin of killing babies so i don't think you want to develop that sin in your life so i highly suggest that serving your parents is not going to hurt you or is not going to kill you and it's only going to help you become a better person when you also develop a sibling or a child and that's the best way to develop a good moral characteristic life a very short message just for all of you uh, it's still the month of february but in the month of july all the dates will be specified all the detail will be given out via email uh, and website you'd see 2015 is underway the preparation so all of you who are watching and all of you who will watch via YouTube, uh, please stay prepared and stay tuned for the link for registration. It will come out soon. And if you do not, or if we do not have your email address, please email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com and all the information will be provided. Swami will give his spiritual lecture. Varnivesaramaniyadarsanam Mandaha saruchirananam Bhujam Poojitam suranaro tamer muda Dharmanandanam aham vichintai Dharmanandanam aham vichintai Sri Ganesham Maharajani Almighty Supreme Lord, our beloved Kansam Maharaj Pujapat Guruji Pujya Bhagatji and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs> Bhagwan Swami Narayan was manifested on this earth before uh, around about 230 years. Then after, after having manifested on this earth, Bhagwan Swami Narayan beheld as an ordinary child as uh, in, a, in his childhood age. He was playing with the other kids he was also enjoying he he was doing everything like a child but still sometimes he saw uh, some miracles to others so that one who has some kind of intellect of religion they can understand this is not an ordinary person but this is uh, some divine qualities that remain in this person and that's why anyhow one can attach with the supreme personality of godhead as this is a god but not an ordinary person then after after performing a uh, human like as well as divine actions in his childhood age bhagwan swamnan himself uh, renounce his home renounce his family his family members his friends everybody he renounced everything and just went for uh, 
for pil uh, for the pilgrimage and he walk throughout india first he selected his dear most place and that is the himalayas in in the himalaya in his tender age of a very younger age he performed very harsh and very hard austerities even though he was he is the supreme personality still he performed this austerity for only for giving us the message so that at least we can uh, remain uh, we can perform fast on the days of ekadashi and other festival days then after after himalayas bhagwan swaminarayan as a nilkantvarni now in his childhood age bhagwan known as gansyam maharaj then when he he was in his pilgrimage then in the himalayas and on other tour to other places he he was known as nilkantvarni now when one place by one uh, one place by other place uh, one tirth from the other tirth bhagwan himself walked barefooted and then after after wandering or after roaming all over the countries bhagwan finally reached in one of the small town of southern gujarat that is lodge in the lodge he was uh, sitting near our bank of the one of step well now everybody come uh, everybody from the village whenever they want some water they have the only source and this that is the step well so everybody used to come to the step well and in this way one of the sons of sadguru ramanand swami sukan and swami came there for purpose of bathing now he watched this unknown person unknown yogi he did not know who is he or what is his name nothing then he after completing his task sukan and swami asked nilkantvarni who are you where are you come from and everything about his family and uh, relatives everything then nilkantvarni gave him some initial information then after sukhan and swami knowing him this is not an ordinary person but some divine virtues remain in his qual- uh, in his life so that sukhan and swami invited nilkantvarni to his own ashram so that he can meet muktan and swami in charge of the ashram nilkantvarni agreed to come in the ashram and finally when he came to the ashram muktan and swami welcomed nilkantvarni and then after in the discussion nilkantvarni every where whenever he goes uh, whenever he went in all whatever the tirth but and whoever the person or a yogi or sanyasi or sadhu he met he every day ask he every time ask the one question the nature of five elements then nobody can give a precise and satisfactory reply but here nilkantvarni had repeated his question for muktanand swami now muktanand swami is such a intellectual person as well as by the grace of his guru he had acquired all the qualities of knowledge he had acquired all kinds of knowledge of the scriptures so that he had no harassment or he has no difficulty to give the precise reply to nilkantvarni and muktanand swami gave a correct and satisfactory reply to nilkantvarni's question then nilkantvarni had also checked many other ways the lives and the way of life of muktanand swami and other saints then after when nilkantvarni satisfied by the 
behavior of the all of the sons then he decided to stay in their ashram now when he had asked about who was the guru of that sons uh, santos and uh, who was the head of the ashram and everything then muktanand swami gave him uh, the knowledge and information about raman and swami that sadguru ramanand swami was their guru and he was the head of their fellowship uh, everything that he was our incarnation of uddhav ji everything then after when nilkantwani <coughs> listen the name of raman and swami remember dharmadev and bhakti mata's guru was raman and swami so now he also want to meet raman and swami and that's why he stay there but as he has eagerness in his heart to meet raman and swami he one day after that day he repeatedly asked muktanand swami when and where i can meet raman and swami muktanand swami gave him some reply that uh, he will come uh, after two months or after three months he was right now at buj so we cannot uh, we cannot go there without his permission and finally muktanand swami shows our way so that uh, nilkantwani can communicate with raman and swami and describing the nilkantwani's qualities and virtues Ram, uh, muktanand swami write a letter to raman and swami and he also said nilkantwani to write another letter for raman and swami and nilkantwani wrote everything about his own and uh, give uh, and write down this letter and a letter uh, had been sent uh, with uh, mayaram bhat to raman and swami now uh, when raman and swami gave reply the li- reply to the letter raman and swami written in his letter that if you want to stay in this fellowship you have to embrace this pillar then when nilkantwani got this message he literally embrace the pillar of the ashram but then mayaram bhat said this is not the Uh, this is not what raman and swami want to say you but raman and swami want to say that this muktan and swami is like a pillar of this fellowship and if you want to stay firm if you want to stay long for uh, for your life in this fellowship then you have to follow each and every command of muktan and swami you have to embrace the words of muktan and swami in this way when nilkantwani even Nilkantwani was not an ordinary person but he was he is the god himself but still for giving us some message he behave like a unaware person now as guru's command is there to remain in the order of muktan and swami nilkantwani follow each and every words of muktan and swami now muktanand swami had given him a first diksha that is parsa the diksha and give him another name the new name that is sarjudas now sarjudas play a role of an ideal disciple how should i ideal disciple live according to his guru's agnya meaning commands now uh, muktanand swami commanded nilkan uh, sarjudas go in the fields and collect some cow dung for fuel cook for the sant then sarjudas do everything uh, sarjudas did uh, m- making food for the santos uh, also that is a place of pilgrimage so there are so many groups of devotees come from far and near villages so that sarjudas had to cook for them also now if any sant or any devotees 
is seriously ill and not feel good so at the time milkan uh, sarjudas the divine personality of god and himself himself massage their devotees or sons feed or legs and also give him some medicine in this way he served all the santos only to f- fulfill his one of the desire that is to please his guru raman and swami because it is raman and swami's words that to follow each and every command of muktan and swami muktan and swami was also a divine and eternal person from the divine bar of aksardham he knew everything about nilkantharni and sarjudas but as a dispre decided role so that he <coughs> he had to live with sarjudas as he was a guru of sarjudas now in this way bhagwan swami narayan himself by his human like action give us a message how to follow each and every command of one's guru now if we should ponder in our own heart in our own life as a disciple of a perfect guru if it is good that we follow the each and every command of our gurus but if we cannot follow each and every words of our guru then we have to realize in our heart that even though the bhagwan swami narayan himself follow each and every command of guru then we are a uh, merely human beings we are not god so we have to follow each and every words of our guru in our life if we want to be great in spiritual world meaning if we want to attain a higher mantle or higher position so that we in that position we can contact god face to face then we have to follow commands of our guru now what is the need of guru in our life no doubt the scriptures say that guru is the first step of every spiritual aspirant but if our mind has the have this question that why should we have a guru or why should we follow commands of guru then just consider here in us every home has a heating and cooling system now if in the winter outside everywhere snow and if your heating system suddenly stop any problem in the system in the machine and you don't know about how to repair it then you definitely call a uh, any technician who can repair your system one technician came he uh he observed the system machine everything then he had observed the system for one hour till the time he had nothing he did not do anything in the machine he just observed the system then after he take his tools and do only one thing one screw is uh, there is a uh, one screw is not properly fitted in the machine and he just take his drill and just change the screw but then after your system is start now he ask for you 500 dollars as his fees you ask you ask him you have not changed uh, you have nothing changed more than the more than this crew this crew has no this amount that 500 ladder 500 dollars then he said if you have a knowledge to change this crew 
and if you can change then that's fine my uh, my presence at here your home that is not needed but as you don't know about how to repair this machine and i have for one hour observe what is the mistake what is the faults in this machine and finally according to my knowledge i have find out after one hour that this is the mistake this is the fault and i have changed the screw and i am not asking from you a price of this screw but it is my idea it is my knowledge which can earn, earn me $500 now come back to our point or whenever our mind asks us the question why should we follow the each and every command of a guru or why should need a guru then just as a technician he knew everything about machine how to repair it and what is the fault of the machine now we also observe the machine at the same time but we cannot find out even the faults in the same way whenever we have any problem in the religion meaning our religious life and we cannot find out our faults there are so many faults we have faced throughout the day but we cannot even observe or we cannot even find out we cannot realize what is our mistake but if we have a technician in the form of our guru and if we approach if we contact him if we keep him keep his company then he definitely give us the satisfactory solution of our problems not only he give us the knowledge of about our own faults but he also give us the knowledge about the remedies to cure our diseases in the form of our faults or mistakes this is what the need of guru in our life bhagwan swamirayan himself give us the message from his human like behavior in the lodge where he behaved as a staunch and ideal disciple and follow each and every commands of muktan and swami in this way we should also follow each and every command of our puja guruji so that we can also attain god realization we can also attain such a position that god will be pleased upon us so now it is our uh, it that is our on our own part to follow each and every command to uh, command of our puja guru ji by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharajani jai shri patim shri dharam sarvadeveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hari माधवम केशव कामदम कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज